Before we can start applying the paint, the body of course needs to be prepped. A couple things need to be adjusted and a couple panel lines even need to be added. First of all, before I do any sanding, I'm just going to go over all of the panel lines, scribe them out and make them a bit deeper so they don't disappear after a couple coats of paint. For the panel line around the fuel filler door, I'm using a small engraving needle instead of the engraving blade, as the engraving blade might just ruin the panel lines as some of these bends are really, really sharp and a needle can get through them a lot easier. So I'm using that one instead, very carefully going over the lines a couple times just to make them a bit deeper. Something I didn't even notice during the unboxing itself is that the panel line on the roof is missing entirely, so that of course needs to be created. This is to separate the carbon fiber roof from the rest of the body panels, and also probably something structural and body-wise uh, in the mechanical section to just glue it all together and not being able to have that in one piece, so that's probably why that's there. In any case, I need to add that panel line and I'm doing that really simply by applying a small line of masking tape. This is fine line masking tape from Tamiya. I will leave links to all of the products down in the description below. And then scribing along that tape very, very carefully and very lightly a couple of times with a super sharp new hobby blade until there is a nice groove cut in there and then switch over to the engraving blade to make it a bit deeper and a bit wider so that the panel line is nice and pronounced. The first couple passes with the engraving blade are super, super light. I don't really want to shoot out of the panel line and create a scratch that I, of course, don't want. So I'm just going over it very, very lightly and multiple times until the groove starts forming itself and you create the panel line. Once one side is done, we, of course, move on to the other side of the tape and, of course, do the other side of the roof, too. A couple minutes of very careful scribing later and the panel line is there. So now that all the panel lines have been taken care of, they are nice and deep and won't disappear after some paint. I'm just going to go over the entire body with a 400 grit sanding sponge to get it nice and rough for the primer to stick to it. Before moving into the spray booth, all of the sanding dust was of course carefully removed with a couple of fine brushes and some paper towels. I then brushed over it again with a airbrush just blowing some, uh, some air through it to remove the rest of the remaining dust, then put it onto a Tamiya spray stand. Again, links are in the description below if you're interested, and then applied a couple light coats of primer. The primer I'm using is Tamiya Gray Primer. This is both suitable for plastic and metal, and in this case also for resin bodies. Now normally you would just use your regular primer from the paint set line that you're using, but in this case with it being a resin primer, not all primer sticks to it. Specifically, plastic primers will not stick to resin, so don't bother using those, just move on to a proper primer. And in this case, I would suggest using the Tamiya primer as that works really well with these resin bodies and sticks super good. I also really love the quality of this primer. The body was then sanded again with a 600 grit and some lines were again refined at the front where the window uh, is mounted. This line on the top was a bit too long so it actually showed through on the window past the black mark and that of course needed to be shortened a bit. After sanding it again with the 600 grit it was nice and smooth. The heavier scratches were removed and some of the imperfections in the primer were removed too so another coat of primer was applied. This final coat of primer was applied. I let it sit and cure for about an hour before moving on to paint. I did check it over before to see if there were any imperfections or spots that needed to be sanded out, which there weren't luckily, so I could just move on to applying the color. I decided to go with a BMW color, one that is pretty rare on these newer cars, but was used a lot back in the day, and that is Daytona Violet. I really love the way this color comes out, and along with the interior color I have planned, I think it will work really, really well. 
So the first light coat was applied to all of those hard to reach, easy to forget spots. Then I moved on to the rest of the body for a first initial light coat too. first coat is applied, I then let that sit for about 10 minutes and moved on to the second coat. With this being a resin body, I can apply the coats a bit heavier than I could if this were to be a plastic body. This paint uh, does not really bite into resin as hard as it does on a plastic body. Be aware of that, uh, but you can just apply a bit heavier of a coat. It does take a bit longer for it to dry but it also does give a nice coverage and it does also level out a lot better if you're applying a bit of a heavier coat. But again, this is only suitable for either a metal or resin body. If you're gonna be doing this on plastic bodies, it will start eating into the plastic and giving you all sorts of nasty looks. So just keep it light on plastic and with resin and metal, you can go a bit heavier. So a third coat was applied as well after another 10 minutes of curing time and I then set it aside overnight to fully cure before moving on the next day to applying the carbon fiber decal on the roof. I quickly made a small template with some masking tape, made the outline with a pencil, transferred that to the Scale Production uh, carbon fiber decal sheet, cut it out and started applying it. As far as carbon fiber decal application goes, I'm going to show you the general things I go through in this video. But if you want more in-depth videos, there are multiple carbon fiber dedicated videos on my channel. So feel free to check those videos out as well. Before applying the decal, I like to lay down a bit of decal setting solution. This helps to conform and also acts as a bit of a glue for the decal to stick even better to the body itself. So that was laid down, the decal was then placed on top and I can then carefully start removing all of the moisture and air from underneath with a cotton swab just carefully rolling over the decal and uh, pushing that out and starting to conform it to the shape of the roof. So after a careful couple minutes of rolling and pressing the main air bubbles out, there are some fingers left on the left and right side, and these can easily be removed with a bit of heat. And that is where the decal setting solution comes in again, as this softens the decal, and with a bit of heat, it also helps to conform the decal to the shape of the roof in this case. A bit more of the uh, pressing and rolling was added here, as there were still a couple of small air bubbles underneath, and some air pockets in the deeper areas, which of course needed to be removed too. The decal is now conformed to shape. It was cut oversized intentionally so that I didn't come short of course, but it does require a bit of cutting and reshaping on the edges of the newly created panel lines for the roof section in order to completely fit in and also tuck into that panel line a bit and make it a nice neat finish. If you do decide to do this, by the way, be sure that your knife is super sharp and the decal isn't completely dry yet, as you can then still pull the uh, excess piece off easily. If it is completely dry, then it doesn't really have any use as the rest of the decal will stick to the paint. You will just have the panel line cut out nicely. The other decals for the BMW roundels on the front and rear plus BMW M4 logo were applied too. I then let this sit and cure for a couple of hours and it's probably best to leave it overnight before moving on to clear coating. In this case, I'm starting off with mixing the 2K clear from Street Blisters, a bit thicker than usual, just because it needs to adhere to the decals a bit more, and I'd like to lay down a really good base layer that grabs onto the paint. The decals were sprayed first with a light coat just to get them acclimated to the clear. It starts just pulling into the decals a bit, and uh, creating a super strong bond between them. If you just apply a really thick coat on top of it, it will probably start creating some problems. So for the first coat, just keep it light and let it sit for about 10 minutes after that application before moving on to the second coat of clear.
With the first coat of clear now applied, let it sit for 5 to 10 minutes before moving on to the second coat of clear. In this case, I added a little bit of extra thinner to the clear coat mixture just to make it a bit thinner and help it flow out even more to create that super glossy and smooth finish we're after. And again, if you're either happy with this final coat, you can just leave it, but you could also decide to let it sit and cure for another five to 10 minutes, add a little bit of extra thinner into the mixture to make it even thinner and help it flow out even more and then go for a third and final coat of clear. Now, of course, the less clear coat you apply, the less thickness of clear will be built up. The more clear coat you will apply, the more thickness will be built up. So that all depends on what you're looking for. And if the finish still isn't really as you desire, you of course will need to either start polishing it later on after it's cured, or in this case, you could still add a bit more clear. But again, be careful to not apply too much clear as it can just fill up a lot of the panel lines and not really look all that great. I have received a couple comments in the past and will probably receive a couple comments in the future that I do tend to apply a bit much clear and that it can uh, start helping the details disappear in some of the mold lines. But I just really like the smooth finish out of the gun and rather have that than having to polish it, spend hours on it that way and potentially even ruin it by polishing it, going through the paint and leaving some nasty scratches behind. But that is all up to personal preference. After this coat was applied, I was really happy with the way it looked, set it aside for a couple of days before moving on to the rest of the bodywork. And in the meantime, I'll put my attention onto the interior and some other components.